screen, take your Bibles and open them to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. If you would follow as I read, beginning with verse 1, I'll read two or three verses and then we'll go into our study. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Now the context of this is that Paul, when he was Saul and he got saved on Damascus Road for three years, he went to Arabia and he was uh, directly given the gospel by revelation from Jesus Christ himself. And then um, he went to Jerusalem briefly to talk to the Jerusalem church leaders, the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And he stayed only about two and a half weeks. And then he went back to his hometown of Cilicia and went to Syria and uh, Antioch. and, and, And he ministered there for a long time, and now 14 years later, he goes back to Jerusalem, and there's a reason why he's going back. He said, I went by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run and had run in vain. May the Lord bless again the reading of his word here tonight. Let me tell you that Judaism, the religion of Moses, the religion of Israel was, is considered to be the cradle of Christianity. But it also almost became the grave of Christianity because of Judaizers. Judaizers were men who had come into the churches that Paul had started on his first missionary journey. And Paul preached to them that salvation is by grace and grace only. That it's grace and not of works. But the Judaizers were Jewish Christians who were saying, no, 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 it's not like that at all. No, no, here's what it is. You've got to, it's, it's grace plus something. The Judaizers were saying it's grace plus something. They're, they're saying it's grace plus good works, grace plus circumcision, grace plus the Jewish rituals and, and, and all of these things that you've got to abide by and obey. Grace plus something. Paul said, no, no, don't you dare, don't you dare spread this false gospel among these Christians of whom uh, we have led to the Lord. But they were. And it's getting to be a big problem. It was such a problem that, like I said, the religion of Moses, Judaism, was the cradle of Christianity, but almost became the grave of Christianity. Had it not been for Paul's intervention and the Lord's divine intervention, who knows what might have happened. But we find as we look, beginning with verse 1 of chapter 2, says there, Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem. Why did Paul go up to Jerusalem after such a fruitful ministry there in Antioch? The answer is found in the book of Acts. You don't have to turn there, but I've got the scripture. I'm going to read them to you. In Acts chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, says this, that after Paul's great Wonderful ministry in the first missionary journey. As he started those churches in the regions of Galatia. It says in Acts chapter 15, 1 and 2. That certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren. And these certain men are those Judaizers. They said to the Jewish Christians who were Gentile, or to the Gentile Christians rather. They said to them, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now when a man was circumcised, what he was doing ritually was saying that I have become a dedicated adherent to the religion 
of Moses, the religion of Israel, Judaism. And I fully absorb myself into it and will abide by all the rituals and the laws and all the legalist things that, that you're supposed to do. And Paul is teaching grace among the Gentiles. He is saying grace plus nothing. The Judaizers come in and say grace plus something. So they are coming in and they're stirring up trouble. When therefore it says in Acts chapter 15 verse 2, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, which means disagreement, and dissipation, which means debate with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders of this question of circumcision and what the Judaizers were preaching and teaching erroneously. And so Paul and Barnabas decide we're going to go up to Jerusalem to the mother church. We're going to look up Peter, James, and John, these leaders of the church. and We're going to stand for the gospel we're not going to be ashamed of the gospel. We're going to stand for it. And we're going to tell them it's grace plus nothing, not grace plus something, as those false teachers were teaching. So they go up there. That's what it says here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul went, Barnabas went. That was his, that was his associate and strongly tied worker to him. And Barnabas was the encourager, and then he took Titus, and Titus was a Gentile Christian, of whom I am sure that those Judaizers were really strongly saying that Titus should be involved and participate in the act of circumcision, but Paul says no, takes Titus with them. He said, I went up by revelation. In other words, Paul said, Man did not send me, but God has sent us up to Jerusalem. Just like Paul said that it was not man who gave him the gospel, but God who gave him the gospel. I mean, just go back and look at chapter 1, verse 11. In chapter 1, verse 11, he said, I certify or solemnly swear to you, brethren, that the gospel was preached of me, is not after man, neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul said, Jesus gave me the gospel, and Jesus has led us up to Jerusalem. Not man, but our Lord Jesus has done this. It's a God thing. So they're in Jerusalem for this Jerusalem council. Verse 2, again of chapter 2, he says, We went up by revelation. We communicated the gospel. Now, this, again, put in this context, he's writing to the church of Galatia after the Jerusalem council had taken place, and it's sometime after. But anyway, he said, What we had done on that Jerusalem council is we went up there, and we communicated unto them that gospel which I preached unto the Gentiles. And he said, And I privately, while we were up there for the council meeting, Paul says to the churches of Galatia, he said, we privately, privately, we went to them of reputation. Who do you suppose them of reputation were? The big dogs in the church, which were James, John, and Peter. So he said, we went to them privately. He did not want to go publicly and stir up even more trouble. He went to them privately and he said, last by any means I should run or had run in vain. He wanted to make sure that all the seeds that he had planted in the in Galatia region and everywhere else, that, that it was not a waste of time. And that it would not be a waste of time from here on. So they go up there, and he said, and a good, and this is a major, major victory for Paul in verse 3, and that Titus, who was with him, being a Greek, was compelled not to be circumcised. They, they did not make him to be circumcised. Major victory for Paul. In Acts 15.4, it says, When they came to Jerusalem, 
They were received of this church, the mother church, of the apostles and elders, Peter, James, and John, those pillars and leaders in the church. And Paul declared all things that God had done with them. Paul began to share his testimony and say, now guys, hey, up here, you leaders, let me tell you what great things God is doing in the church down there where we're preaching among the Gentiles. Let me tell you how God is saving people and doing wonderful things. All right, then we pick up in verse 4 of Galatians 2. And because of false brethren, this is the Judaizers, unawares that it were brought in and came in privately to spy our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus and it is truly indeed a liberty that we have in Christ our Lord remember it's grace plus nothing that's liberty we have freedom in Christ not bondage in Christ so he said the Judaizers were coming in that they might bring us into bondage see that they were coming in and realizing our liberty in Christ and trying to put us back into bondage. Into the bondage of what? The bondage of Judaism, legalism. Verse 5 says, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, Paul said we did not give them subjection, not for an hour, not even for a moment, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, and I like this out of Paul, boy. Paul was not intimidated by James, John, and Peter. The leaders and the pillars of the church, the mother church in Jerusalem. Paul was not intimidated by them and did not look at them and say, all right, I know he had respect for them. I know Paul had respect for James, John, and Peter. But he did not, he wasn't intimidated by them. And he says here, in verse 6, these who seem to be somewhat, in other words, they were big dogs, but he said, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. And God is, he's saying God is not one who favors one greater than another. For they who seem to be somewhat in this conference added nothing to me. Paul said, they did not change my opinions they did not change my beliefs. They did not attempt to even try to do this, he's saying. But contrarywise, these leaders of the church, Paul said, when they saw that the gospel of uncircumcision, that is, that was committed to him, in other words, he said, me preaching to the Gentiles and the gospel of the circumcision that was given to Peter, that is, that he said, Paul said, the leaders of the church in this conference realized that God had called Paul to preach to the Gentiles and Peter to preach to the Jews. Now, does that mean that Peter never preached to Jewish people? No. All you got to do is go back and look at Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Peter preached to Gentiles too. Does that mean that, that Paul never preached to Jews? No. If you remember... It's in Romans 15, 1, I believe it is, that Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and his salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. So every town Paul would go to, he preached to the Jewish people first, then to the Gentiles. It's just that their primary ministry was Peter to the Jews, Paul to the Gentiles. And Paul said that the leaders of the church are realizing this, and there's no dispute among them that this is what God has called them to do. Verse 9 says, when James and Cephas and John, Cephas is Peter, by the way, when James and Peter and John, when they seemed to be pillars, and Paul needed the pillars to be on his side, by the way. He needed James, John, and Peter to be on his side. So when James and Cephas, that is Peter and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave him to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. The right hands of fellowship that we should go into the heathen. And the word heathen is just a word which represents and means it's in reference to Gentiles. He said, James and John and Peter have given us the right hands of fellowship, me and Barnabas that is, that we will go and our ministry will be to the Gentiles. 
and that they will focus on the Jews. And that's the way God intended on it to be here. James, John, and Peter said, there's only one thing, though, Paul, there's just one thing. We want you to go to the Gentiles, well minister Jews, but just one thing is there are some Jerusalem Christians who are poor, and they're needy, and they're going to need some food, and we want you to consider helping them. And he knew that Paul would be going into some Greek cities where they could take up some offerings, and Paul did do that later. But he said, verse 10, only that we should go, that you should remember the poor. The same which also Paul said I was forward to do. Paul said I wanted to do that anyway. Now, everything seems good. Everything went good in that Jerusalem council. And by the way, Peter had even stood up and said in that Jerusalem council these words. In Acts chapter 15, 7 through 11, Peter has said, So when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and he said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how good while ago God made choice between that us, the Gentiles by my mouth, should hear the word of the gospel and believe, and God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost as he did unto us. He's talking about in Acts chapter 10 when God lowered that curtain of the animals down and everything. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So Peter had stood up in the Jerusalem council as the leader of the Jerusalem church. He stood with Paul, Peter, the preacher to the Jewish people. Paul, the preacher to the Gentile people. And the Jerusalem council are standing together, standing together, standing together for Christ and the gospel of freedom. The gospel of liberty. They're standing together. Looks good, doesn't it? And it was good. But then something happened. Paul goes back to Macedonia, I mean to um, Antioch, and he's continuing his ministry. And a little bit later time, Peter comes. I guess he's going to come and check up on Paul and see how things are going. Peter was a changed man. It says here in verse 11, Peter was come to Antioch, and Paul said, I withstood him to the face. I stood up to his face because he was to be blamed. Uh-oh, what did, Peter, what did Peter do now? Peter was a rock, right? What did Peter do now? I mean, Peter was always up and down. Peter was like a yo-yo. I'm sure when he was a kid, that's probably his favorite toy, a yo-yo. Up and down, up and down. But Peter, goodness gracious, same one who walked on the water to go to Jesus during the storm, and then when he heard the thunder and saw the lightning and felt the winds, he began to sink. Peter, same one who told Jesus, I'm ready to go to prison with you and to die for you, and then when the cock began to crow, he denied Jesus three times, just as Jesus said he would. And now here is Peter, who stood with Paul at the Jerusalem council and said it's a gospel of liberty. It is grace plus nothing. No no other thing anyone has to do. It's simply by the grace of God. And Peter was one after God told him, lowered that animal with, I mean that, that sheet with the, Different animals that said, you can eat these now. And Peter said, but no, no, we're, I'm a Jewish man. And we cannot eat these animals. They're unclean. And God says, you can. And I say, you can. And Peter gets it. He understands. And he says that this is in reference to people. And that there is no one considered common or unclean. And Peter says, the gospel is for anyone. And you read it, you'll find it. It says in Acts 10, 34, Peter said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, meaning that the salvation is for anyone, and it is grace plus nothing. Don't have to 
be a Jewish person. So at that time, Peter made a lot of friends with Gentiles, and he would eat with them. He would eat with them. That says this in Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Peter had said, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Peter said that. Doesn't matter the nationality of a person, the color of a person's skin, the language they speak. Doesn't matter where they come from. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And Paul even said this in Galatians 3.28. All you got to do is flip over one page. Neither is there Jew nor Greek, neither is there bond nor free, neither is there male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Peter got it. He understood it. And Peter was practicing this. Peter was preaching this. Salvation plus nothing. Grace plus nothing. But then Peter heard some of those big dogs from the mother church in Jerusalem were coming down to Antioch to visit. Peter did not want to disappoint some of those big dogs. So Peter stopped eating with those Gentile Christians. He was thinking this might upset them and ruffle up some feathers if they see me eating with them. And, they're, and I cannot let them think that I am disassociating myself from the religion of Moses, which Paul is trying to get the people to separate from. And Peter had separated from, but now Peter is not, apparently isn't completely let go because he holds on a little bit here. Let's look at it. It says in chapter 2 of Galatians, verse 13 now, or verse 12, for before that certain came from James, that is the church in Jerusalem, where James was the pastor, James the half-brother of Jesus, he did at one time, he, before he was eating with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself from them which were of the circumcision. That is pure, total hypocrisy on Peter's part. Paul called him out on it. Paul stood to his face and he said, Peter, that's hypocritical. We're preaching salvation, grace, plus nothing, and now you are reverting back to salvation plus something, saying that you've got to hold on to that Jewish religion and don't disappoint them. Paul is thinking, who cares if they're disappointed? It's all about Jesus anyway, not us and not them. So verse 13, the other Jews dissembled, other Jews dissembled likewise. That word dissemble means hypocrite or hypocrisy. Insomuch that even Barnabas, goodness gracious, Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. And dissimulation also means hypocrisy. And this greatly upset Paul. When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, and he counted Peter as being the responsible leader who was leading them wrongly, erroneously leading them by a bad example. He said, I said to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, that is in freedom, and not do as the Jews, why compel us the, the Gentiles now to start doing as the Jews and that is live in bondage? He said, Peter, by you doing this, you're setting the wrong example. You're eating with the Jewish people, adhering to their beliefs in the religion of Judaism. And you're saying it's religion now, it's salvation plus something. And you're, you're just asking people to have to, to be in bondage again when they're set free. And we are set free in Jesus. We don't have to be entangled in bondage. Galatians 5.1 says this. Just flip over two pages now. Look at Galatians 5.1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. We, are, we were like that gospel song. We were a bird in prison that was set free. Can't remember the words how it goes. 
But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. We are set free and delivered in Jesus. And we need to live that way and let people know that all they've got to do to be saved is to trust him in their hearts and believe by faith it's grace plus nothing. There's nothing anyone can do to be saved. It's all by the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel that Paul preached and was hammering down hard upon Peter and Barnabas and the others. Stand with the gospel and preach the truth. The truth, John 8, 32 says, will set you free. Let us pray.